Hey, good morning, 842. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Uh, Wednesdays, Education Wednesdays with uh, Guam Department of Education Superintendent John Fernandez in the KUAM News uh, Link Zoom Room. Good morning, John. Hey, good morning, and you know, Happy New Year to all of you uh, over at uh, the station and uh, to all of our families out there. And um, you know, glad to have everybody back in school uh, starting uh, Monday. Uh, getting back, you know, getting back for the school year. Um, so, you know, we're happy to get these uh, conversations back as well so we can keep the community informed as, as we go along, um, you know, for the hopefully for the rest of the school year. Right. Uh, and we do have Isaiah Uggen who uh, covers education for the KUAM uh, news team. He's also in the uh, Zoom room. I, I know he's on the road, so he might have some issues with his camera, which is such a shame because he's a handsome young gentleman. Uh, Isaiah, are you there? Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Superintendent. Happy Good New morning, Year. Uh, I just wanted to follow up to see how the department is doing and how are they preparing now um, that, well, Guam is expecting to see the Omicron variant, and we've seen over 200 cases reported yesterday. Um, what is the department doing to prepare for a possible fourth surge? Well, you know, again, it's, it's like we're almost in constant uh, preparation, monitoring, and uh, adjusting. Um, given uh, the the past, you know, eighteen months to two years now, going on two years of this pandemic, and uh, watching, um, you know, the news and seeing how the, uh, especially with Omicron, you know, how it's been affecting other jurisdictions, uh, with the anticipation, of course, that Guam will not be, you know, left out of the picture. We're going to see the effects. So, um, as you know, and as you recall. You know, our directive from the board is uh, to to provide five days of instruction uh, to our kids. And so that's what we opened up the school year with and we'll continue to do so. At the same time, uh, we're talking to our principals. Uh, we have a meeting this morning, kind of give them an update on what we know about um, about the, um, you know, Omicron uh, variant, uh, what we are doing and monitoring to ensure that we can uh, continue to keep our kids in school and and to do so safely and then of course continue to work with the board and with public health uh, in anticipation that over the next week over the next week or two we will you know we were likely to see a spike you know in cases so um i mean we're you know it's you know as i was saying a little earlier during the break um you know yes you know we're planning and preparing but we're also um monitoring the the distinct characteristics that the different variants seem to have. And so with Omicron, you know, uh, what we know about it is that it, it's a, it's pretty swift and contagious, and it, it leads us to anticipate that there will likely be a quick spike, you know, in the number of cases being reported on Guam. Uh, we're hopeful that the studies showing less severity uh, will, you know, apply in our case as well. You know, we hate to see, uh, you know, families, affected um, you know from a health standpoint by, by the virus so hopefully it won't be as severe as the prior waves uh, but we also know that our healthcare system is is uh, fragile and so uh, we are monitoring the hospitalization on the public health side will be important so you know we've got our plans in place as you know uh, five days of instruction uh, when we start to see positive cases uh, among students you know we have a pretty well established contact tracing uh, effort that that uh, we're, I think has been deployed pretty successfully. We will be monitoring as well um, the, the impact on staff, uh, on staffing. And then of course, uh, monitoring this uh, on a regular basis with, with public health to determine whether more efforts, uh, different efforts are needed uh, due to the distinct characteristics of Omicron. So I think we have a meeting this, you know, this morning after this call uh, with the principals, uh, we will be, I, I know our chair, vice chair will be joining me on a call with the governor tomorrow. And, um, you know, as we go through this uh, and get prepared for this uh, next wave, we will definitely keep the public informed about the plans. Uh, but, they, but just uh, be assured that uh, planning and preparation, you know, continues to go on um, in expectation that this wave will, you know, impact Guam. Any uh, complaints reported in the la- uh, yesterday? I spoke with uh, your interim PIO. Um, she said it was a smooth first day, other than the usual traffic congestion. 
Um, any reports of complaints made yesterday? Well, we know we had some uh, power issues down south that were affecting our schools. So, uh, you know, we have a, a, a we have a, a communication with GPA when those situations happen. So those were resolved yesterday. Um, you know, it's still early in the week, but we are telling principals to to really pay attention to um, the um, the staffing issues if there are any staffing issues. At this point, we're not aware of any uh, you know uh, district wide issue with staff. You know, staff are still coming. Some of the staff are still, you know, we're given extensions on their break, so they may still just be returning uh, to campus. But over the next, you know, few days, and you know, definitely over the next few weeks, you know, should uh, the cases go up, and should we be required uh, to quarantine employees, uh, that's one of the things that we're concerned about because we are seeing in districts across the country, uh, even if they are able to maintain students at school. Um, you know, for five days a week, uh, we do know that that one of the challenges that they're facing is that the Omicron uh, variant is requiring you know a number of employees, um, significant number of employees, to quarantine and not be able to report to work. So we're going to need to be in, uh, sure that our schools are safe from a supervision standpoint and also from manning uh, you know the classrooms. And so we'll be discussing that with the administrators to make sure that we're aware of uh, those changes as we go forward. Students return back from Christmas break. I was wondering how has GDOE accommodated parents who wanted to switch their children from face-to-face -face learning to online? And that was all because of them being concerned regarding COVID cases. Um, do you have an update on that? Uh, we can provide a, a, a more a recent update. I guess now the kids are back. I do know that prior to the break, um, the all indications were that at that time, everyone who had been waitlisted or was applying uh, for the um, for online at the secondary level for middle and high school were able to be accommodated. I think there was some work going on at the elementary level to try to uh, meet the demand of, in elementary and that there were still some uh, students who had not yet been able to be accommodated based on the number of teachers that were available. So we can we can try to get an update to see um, you know if over the break uh, anything changed with regard to those schools who still had uh, kids on the wait list. But I do know anecdotally, uh, just speaking to a teacher last night, that uh, yeah, in some cases, the number of students um, online uh, has, has basically you know, doubled in some schools, um, so in you know, some elementary schools. So as long as the schools can accommodate you know, those students, they've been able to accept them uh, online. So like we can, again, try to provide a more recent update now that kids are back uh, for this week. Any update on receiving the canopies, chairs, tents, the one that you guys used to spend, uh, you guys spent ARP money on? Yeah, those have all been delivered to the school. So they're all at the campuses. So uh, those were happening during December to, to push those out. So um, yeah, so that, that should all be taken uh, care of at the school site. So it's up to the schools how they want to deploy those supports to uh, ensure that we can you know, do what we can to maximize physical distancing on campus. So every school may have a different approach, but they do have the supplies on their campuses and at their, um, you know, at their disposal um, as of, I believe as of December. Any updates on the purifiers? That uh, the purifiers are still uh, under protest. So we're, you know, that, that hasn't moved along. It's, you know, again, frustrating because um, you know, again, we think that uh, they are, these are urgent um, supports that we can use to help assure our, our, teacher, our teachers and our families uh, that, you know, it's an additional way to, to try to combat the, the virus. Unfortunately, we have a procurement process that we have to go through and the vendors have a pretty good leeway in terms of their ability to stop the process. So, you know, we're, we're, we're thinking, I mean, we're, we're obviously in the position of trying to respond and uh, of course, attending uh, to these protests, but we also uh, probably want to want to start urging our vendors if it's possible. Uh, we know it's competitive to try to get you know business and try to you know to compete for their business, but to also keep in mind that these are supports in this case really targeted towards uh, supporting our classroom needs and our students. And so we're hoping that we can work through these uh, protests and get these supplies purchased as soon as possible. 
Uh, we were targeting, uh, you know, with, with, if everything went well, we were targeting an award and delivery by uh, end of January, February. Uh, that's not going to happen while there's a protest underway. So, uh, you know, we'll continue to to work on that, pro you know, through the process. Is this the second time uh, your guys bid or your guys uh, purifier is being protested again? And why do you think people are protesting uh, against them? Well, I think there's a couple of things going on here. Um, I mean, I, I won't get into the details, the specifics of any particular vendor um, or protest, but you know, number one, uh, this is a high volume of HEPA um, purifiers that are going to go into each classroom. So the high volume means a lot of you know, it's it's a, a lot of resources are being uh, dedicated to support this you know this purchase. So it is a big you know it is a big uh, contract to win. And so I'm sure that our you know our vendors want to want the business, and I'm sure they're going to want to compete very hard to uh, get that business. I think the the other issue is uh, maybe concerns about being able to to meet the specifications uh, in our uh, solicitation. Uh, one of those being uh, the timeliness that uh, we really need, you know, in order to put those purifiers in place uh, because of the urgency of the of the situation, you know, the ongoing waves of, of uh, virus or the variants, it's important that we, you know, give enough time to, uh, for, for any vendor to deliver uh, those, those purifiers, but also, you know, th this time frame has to be uh, reasonable so that we can get them in in a, you know, uh, soon and sooner rather than later. So I think there are some questions that have been received about the timing of the deliveries and what we're requiring from of vendors. Uh, I think another area that has uh, since been clarified has been the uh, the requirement to buy American. So we had to go to the USDOE to clarify whether uh, the requirement to buy American could be relaxed or waived in our case, because um, you know in this area of the world, especially with the supply chain issues, uh, getting those purifiers uh, might prove more difficult for some vendors if the Buy American um, requirement is hard and, uh, and fast. So we did get word from USDOE that for Guam in this instance, um, that requirement could, you know, uh, could, that did not need to be uh, in place as long as we could justify the need for uh, that flexibility. So those are kinds of the issues uh, that we are dealing with with regard to the purifiers. What's the latest update in regards to the MyPi devices? So we're actually in a, uh, an unfortunate position of being in between uh, contracts. So the MyPi devices that have been distributed, their contract ended uh, on December 31st. We had anticipated and had planned on having a new contract in place uh, by uh, by the time that expired. Unfortunately, again, similar to the filters, we got a, another protest. Um, I think we've been actually re receiving protests uh, in the in the telecom technology areas uh, pretty regularly. So that is that has been a pretty competitive uh, field for our, our vendors. Um, unfortunately, with the MiFi devices, it means that um, until you know the, the protests kind of pushed us past the timeline for um, our December 31st expiration. So right now we are in the middle of a short-term uh, measure to try to get those services continued while we uh, work to resolve the protests and try to get uh, a new procurement in place as soon as possible. So for now we have, a, you know, we're anticipating a short-term interruption in the my uh, internet access for those families who have devices right now. But, um, you know, we're working on, on something that we're you know, working to expedite to allow us to continue those services uh, while the protests and the, you know, that process is being resolved. So you mentioned that they're in protest and the contract was, uh, I guess, over by the end of December. So what does this mean for students who have MyFi devices and rely on it for uh, online school? Well, it means that you know we have to be in steady communication with those families, which we we have been, uh, to let them know that you know we're working on a, a short-term um, solution to restore those services. But ultimately, you know, we started this, this process in July, and we you know we got the protests uh, in November, and then you know it's it still you know forces us 
to um, you know to delay um, being able to award the contract uh, for the you know, that was supposed to be in place you know before the end of December. So again, um, you know the services should have been in place. Uh, we're very unhappy to see the, the protest that was filed, but I think you know the the law allows for vendors to exercise their rights. Unfortunately, uh, that puts the services at risk for our students. So, you know, we are in steady communication, working with those families uh, at the school level and uh, working with our team to see how we can at least uh, provide a short-term extension of the current services, you know, while we go through this procurement process. All right, and students are, are the last time I spoke with actually the chairman, Mark Mendiola regarding makeup days. It was 24 to 26 days, if I'm not mistaken. And what is the latest in regards to that? Well, we had a work session um, on this um, gosh, over the last couple of weeks uh, during the break. And it, it sounded like uh, board members, um, you know, were, you know, recognized that we probably will need that flexibility to, um, you know, to at least be able to comply with the law. Uh, because the 180 day um, mandate is going to be difficult uh, to to meet on its face without some flexibility, especially with not knowing how the rest of this semester, uh, you know, the rest of the school year will go. So I think uh, you know, after we discuss you know, the various options for addressing the learning loss, learning recovery, um, that there was that did, there did seem to be a, a recognition that we would still need to probably seek uh, flexibility from the um, legislature just to ensure that we are compliant uh, with the, the law's requirements. Now, you know, eventually, if everything goes smoothly this year, uh, it doesn't prevent the board from from looking at at um, you know uh, strategies like extending the school day, extending the school year. Um, you know, just having the waiver of the mandate doesn't prevent that, but it allows us to at least move forward, seek. Um, that flexibility from the legislature, and on top of that, seeking the flexibility to waive uh, the service learning requirements as well for students who uh, require that for graduation, but who are unable to take advantage of any service learning opportunities, uh, given the fact that those opportunities are not readily available, you know, during the during, you know during this COVID nineteen period. So both of those items, um, I anticipate being on our agenda for the uh, January board meeting. And then from there, we will um, you know, send a note to the legislature to request their support in that effort. And it's already January and your evaluation is uh, expected to uh, occur this month. And well, I just wanted, I, I just, okay, this is my final question then. Uh, your evaluation is expected to occur this month, superintendent, and um, you know, I, I, if I'm, I'm not mistaken, I just wanted to not mistaken. They gave you, I forgot what they gave you last year in January. My apologies, but what would you rate yourself and how you did, um, uh, within the, uh, within 2021? How would I rate myself? Well, I, I just, I mean, I don't know. It's a very unusual year. I mean, I think we did our best, uh, to, to meet the challenges, uh, in 2021. Um, I wish we could have done better, um, but looking at how other uh, jurisdictions and states have struggled, I feel like we're all in the same boat of uh, having to tackle a uh, public health crisis, uh, try to provide basic supports to our students and families, uh, trying to uh, maintain continuity of learning through remote, you know, distance learning, as well as getting our kids back to school. A lot was asked of us uh, this school year. And so, um, you know, I'm gonna leave it to the board uh, to give me an evaluation, you know, for me, I don't know that I've ever ended any year thinking that I've done the job uh, without any need for improvement. Uh, we, we just have to constantly work to try to get things better and, you know, deliver services no matter what the challenges are before us. So that's the, you know, the tough part about 2021, you know, trying to keep our team moving forward, trying to keep our eye on the ball of trying to return our kids to school, not being in control of all the circumstances or of the, the, the decisions, uh, and now that we're in 22, we're faced with the same mission and the same, you know, the same uh, responsibilities to try to keep our kids in school, keep them safe, and um, and on top of that, continue uh, teaching and learning 
uh, as we would normally do during any school year. So it's not going to get, uh, I don't think it's going to get that, you know, that much easier, uh, but it's important that, you know, we get the team motivated to continue progress going forward. You know, no complaints, uh, just keep our eye on the ball and, and keep working hard. So I'll leave the board to give me a, a score, a grade, if they, uh, you know, as, as they see fit, but recognizing that the board has been with us, you know, throughout this journey as well. So we're all kind of accountable for, for what we've done and what we're planning to do you know, in this coming year. So I, you know, I just appreciate the teamwork and the support uh, that's been out there, uh, but it has been a challenge and we're looking forward to hopefully, you know, uh, a smoother uh, 2022. So we'll hope and pray for that, even though we, we know that we've got uh, challenges that are immediately ahead. Chris, do I have time for one more question? Isaiah, you can ask 50 more questions. <laughs> Okay, so you're a uh, superintendent I heard from uh, Mr. Mendiola in regards to you having a trip in January uh, or this month actually of, of, uh, for your council chief state school officers role. Um, will there also be discussions with USDOE in regards to your third party fiduciary? Yeah, no, well, we, we, we postponed that meeting. Um, obviously um, there was, I think having a visit in DC at this time was kind of challenging because the cases are spiking there and there was just too much uncertainty about being able to hold the meetings and um, and then of course uh, just the logistics of traveling back and forth so I, you know, I informed the board that uh, the meetings were going to be postponed I had a meeting set up already with the senior advisor to the secretary to continue our discussions about the third party uh, but then we agreed that you know we'll, we'll try to set something up at a later time um, but you know, back in DC, not only has the Omicron spiked, but they also had a winter storm hit. So kind of glad that uh, we made that decision to to uh, try to do that at a later date. Otherwise, I think I'd just be stuck in a you know stuck in the snow, um, you know, trying to keep safe. So um, again, when that when that happens, we'll inform the board if there's a if that meeting is rescheduled. Otherwise, we'll just continue to do things uh, to prepare for a visit. Uh, by USDOE, which is still uh, being scheduled for April or May, where they are expected to come to Guam uh, to give us a, a final evaluation. Okay, one final question uh, for Rose this time. Any of the three GDW employees uh, placed on annual leave finally get the jab or submit to weekly testing, or do they remain on leave? Um, um, so again, we have two uh, teachers and one uh, non, non-classroom staff who are on leave uh, due to the, the mandate and they remain in that status uh, as of today. Uh, we did have an opportunity over the, over the break to uh, try to continue to uh, get clarity on um, what they said were pending requests for religious exemptions. And so I've given them, you know, the information that I have, put them in touch with the right people at the agencies. Um, some of that information could not be shared with me and had to be shared directly with the employee. So we've asked the employees to follow up and we'll support them in that effort. And once they get documentation of any exemptions, then we can you know, proceed accordingly. But I think the big issue that was uh, outstanding um, over the last couple of weeks was just um, an issue of uh, the employees indicating that they had not received a response to their request for religious exemptions. So I did have a chance to meet with DOA and public health to clarify what was going on. Um, and again, some of that information uh, can only be shared with the employees. So I did ensure that the employees are put in contact directly with the people I'm working with. And uh, we're awaiting, you know, awaiting further information so we can proceed under the current, uh, you know, uh, mandate requirements. All right, thank you, Chris. Thank you so much, Isaiah. Uh, John, I just had about 42 more questions. If you don't, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thank you, Isaiah, for jumping on. Thank you. Thank you, Superintendent. Right on. Thank you, John. Happy New Year. Good luck. There you go. Happy New Year, too. Right on. Uh, Superintendent John Fernandez. Good morning. It's 9.06. We are KUAM-FM and Agatnia Guam. This is The Breeze. Also, KUAM-TV. Good morning. Uh, 210 cases reported out of the Joint Information uh, Center uh, last night. And just in talking with...